The following roster and modding were provided by a willing individual. All remarks are meant for enjoyment and educational purposes. Welcome back to the class, everyone. We have another mod shaming video for you all today. A reminder that if you want one of your teams, five characters specifically, to be shamed in one of these videos, do check out the Discord link below. Inside of there, there'll be a specific channel dedicated to this, and there'll be instructions so that you two can be a part of the fun. But today, oh, this is going to be a good one. We are going to be shaming the Night Sisters, and along with that, we have this special special message from the person who submitted this. Again, we don't do these randomly. People volunteer for them. They said, "Screw it, I volunteer my NS." Although I hope my TW officers don't watch. So, shout out to Biscuits Guild, which I guess we're not going to show that, but not really that hard to find. Anyways, don't watch so I can claim I keep dropping battles due to bad RNG. What is bad RNG at the end of the day but bad modding? No, I'm just kidding. Okay, so uh, that being said, this is obviously a very low gear team. That, well, except Daka. That will be taken into consideration. It is worth mentioning that Night Sisters, for the most part, can actually kill a ton of stuff with just a relic Daka. I, I really think they need a little bit more than this, especially Asajj's, uh, not Omicron, but Zeta. On your unique is really good so the damage can actually start stacking while everyone is dying hundreds of times because their gear what is this seven it's like seven or six or something anyways uh so yeah that's gonna have to be taken into consideration but let's go ahead and just start off with probably the most important character here and that is daka herself so daka has one really big thing that she's gonna rely off in this entire time and that is health the way that her kit works with her unique Zeta is that every single time an enemy dies, I believe this dies, right? It's, it's not one. Oh, the, um, or is it when it's revived? All right, when another ally is revived, all like is active, the revived ally gains 20% turn meter, and she gains 10% max health stacking until the end of the encounter. So the whole objective of the Night Sister team, regardless of where the gear is, is for the enemy, your allies to die get revived and then Daka's health just gets super stinking high and as long as there isn't any max health damage out there you eventually just whittle the enemy team down and the Knights really have a lot of ways to do this even without Marin. both Asajj with, with or without her Omicron has ways to build up damage as well as Mother Talzin's Plague is built off of max health damage of the enemy so there are ways that your team can kind of melt them down that being said check out how Daka's modding is her max health is based off of her mods, so that is a key element we're going to be looking for. So, speed is okay on her, really. She's going to gain mostly turn meter from her interactions with reviving and deaths and stuff like that. That being said, she does eventually want to take a turn in case she gets dazed or something like that. But, yeah, so protection here, this is immediate big no-no. This is like, no, she, she can't recover protection unless you have the Omicron on Asajj, which you don't. So... Don't do this. Really need to have health on there. Uh, health pro health sets are okay. Defense sets are actually probably better. Uh, not a lot of things out there are going to be ignoring her defense, I guess, except Grievous himself, which is probably the main counter this is built for. So maybe you can stick with the health sets. That needs to change. This needs to be upgraded to 60 if you want to have it on DACA. Like 5% versus what is the 16? That was a huge discrepancy, man. You got to get on that. This mod is actually really stinking good. Uh, 15 speed. 16% health overall. This is ideally what every single mod of Daka should look like. Some potency or flat health down here in the secondaries would be ideal, but you know, I'll, I'll settle for the two things that matter the most. Uh, overall here on the side, like this is, oh, this is actually really good too. Yeah, health set, 15 speed, a little bit of tenacity isn't bad. Again, potency and flat health is also nice. This one, mm, kind of whatever, y y could, could it be better? Yeah, like a health percent would be here since we have an offense primary that has to be an offense primary. And then this one, I, I'm going to shame this. And if I'm wrong, comments, you let me know. But Doc has crit avoidance, and I get how that's important for the one mission of Secrets and Shadows. Again, I don't mean to be rude, but we are shaming here. This team is not beating any challenge tier of Secrets and Shadows. They're they're way too low to be able to, even with an R5 Daka, you're not going to be able to beat Sidious. I don't even think on that first challenge tier. So that being said, I don't I don't get this because the main counter that I think this team could really actually take apart, especially with Mother Talons played on B1, is going to be Grievous. And if we look at over at Grievous's kit, hopefully we won't end up mod shaming Grievous at the same time. Well, maybe we will. So if we look at over at Grievous's kit and how his leadership works, 
All enemies have negative 40% critical avoidance, which means if you put 35% on Daka, 40 is more than 35, it's a completely wasted stat. Like that, that could very well just be defense or really health would be the best, but even defense or protection would go farther than this because even, it, she, does she get a little bit from her master? I think she gets a very small percent, at least at our five. Yeah, she's up to 42. So she has a 2.5% chance of the critical avoidance actually doing anything, assuming Grievous is below 100% critical chance. So it, it, it just does not seem, does not seem relevant at all, which is really sad because a 23 speed and some health and potency on here. That's actually a pretty good secondary selection. But yeah, primary selection, that's a no-go. Get some health on her. And chat, feel free. Or not chat. Uh, comments. Please do let me know if there's some other secret counter that I'm missing where the critical avoidance is actually relevant. I don't I don't think there is. Asajj, uh, typically you want her to be mostly offense modded if you have her Omicron. The way, actually, or not even Omicron, sorry, her Zeta. This actually might not be super relevant. She has, um, she gains turn meter and she gains, yeah, 10% offense and critical chance stacking until the end of the encounter. So I think the Zeta just kind of solidifies that. So the, her, this modding is still pretty relevant. That being said, if she's getting unlimited amounts of offense and critical chance, you really want to bank on crit damage on her all the way because if she's getting, again, that crit chance doesn't really stop anywhere. It's going to stack until she gets to like 400, 500% to the point where she's critting literally everything except for things that are immune to crits. Then you really want the offense to come in to complement the amount of, crit, uh, or really you want the crit damage to come in to complement the amount of offense she's building as well. I'm a little hesitant. I mean, year 12 isn't terrible. That's still pretty good. So I think you're better off doing a crit damage set here with a crit damage triangle. And you don't, the potency, I'm not going to throw a huge fit on that. She actually does have quite a few debuffs that you want to be able to land. Speed here is okay as well. Yeah, so really aim for crit damage. Speed is hard on her. Her base speed is garbage. It's like, it's even at gear 13, it's not high. It's like 120 or something like that. And her, her kit tries to make up for it as best as it can. What, what I think every if er, for every enemy that doesn't have a buff or something like that, she gets speed or what they do have a buff. I can't remember which one it is. Either way, she has a way to kind of make up for it. Protection still isn't great. Um, unless you have her Omicron, she has no way to recover protection. And the whole the whole Night Sister team is really just built off of health. It always has been. I guess Marin might be changing that a little bit. But for the most part, yeah, big improvement for Asajj. Get uh, crit damage on her so that her damage can actually do something. And I mean, again, we're, this isn't a Zeta shaming video, but do work on her zetas as well mother talzin oh, this just doesn't matter does it you're what like gear four no that's an exaggeration gear i don't know i think that's six i can't remember there's six dots so it's probably six anyways uh this probably just doesn't matter i guess potency ideally you want offense and potency if you look at all of mother talzin's attack she's a special damage dealer which is kind of a fancy way of saying her crit chance for special damage is gonna suck it's stuck all the way down here at like 13%. So she's pretty much never going to be critting. So you want to really bank on the fact of her offense alone. She's a pretty decent damage dealer when she's not in gear two or whatever. Uh, so an offense primary here. Oh, that's beautiful. Very nice. An offense primary here. Not that. Um, and I guess offense here too. She does have a way to gain turn where so speed isn't of the utmost importance like it is for every single other character. But speed set, I mean like... I, I would rather an offense set, but again, I don't really know how much offense a gear six mother talisman is going to be pumping out, especially, oh, she doesn't even have her turn meter Zeta. Yeah, I guess we're doing a Zeta stream too. So, I mean, again, her plague is built off of max health damage, but she needs to be able to actually land it. And what is she seeing at? 26% potency with what? Oh, 50. You might still land it on something. 75% uh, isn't terrible. They would have to have quite actually, but quite a bit of tenacity to be able to resist it entirely. But yeah, I don't know. You gotta be dealing enough damage they can't just immediately heal back to 100% and cleanse the plague, so that's a problem. Uh, Zombie actually is gear 10, which is super cool because that means she can use her unique where she actually just doesn't really die ever. Uh, her mods, I kind of don't really care about Zombie's mods. If you go and look at my account right now, I actually don't have mods because I still run Paper Zombie for a variety of reasons, mostly it has to do with killing Malgus and Lord Vader. I really don't want Fracture or shock or things like the stick up to show her be dead uh so i'm really kind of whatever on zombies mod she'll take health i guess uh defense would also be nice a little bit of speed doesn't hurt because once she gets running around in circles with 100 percent extra speed or whatever because of endless horde if they can't kill her it's actually pretty nice so i don't have a lot to say here zombie you're 
you're pretty much dead to me in more ways than one, so you can stay. You can do whatever it is that you're doing. Spirit, a little bit more gear than Mother Talzin, but that was not hard. Very similar to Talzin, though, you're going to want to focus on potency and offense. Primarily offense. I guess you could, you could push a little bit in the crit damage way, but she doesn't have any way of really gaining offense herself. She does do nice damage, though, because she can... Uh, she, actually, she does have the 100% offense boost here, and her attacks ignore armor, which means if she has Foresight coming to the hit, this hit right here can just do a ton of damage. I've seen it one-shot some things, primarily in Conquest, where her numbers are already, you know, through the roof because of really high Relic levels and modifications and stuff like that. Uh, I can't throw a huge fit on any of this because, oh gosh, no speed, come on. Oh, risk it for the biscuit, man. Yikes. Okay, so that's not super cool. Um, there's some speed. That's kind of nice. I mean, she wants to be able to take turns. You want to be able to decrease a uh, turn meter with this special. So a, a potency set as a secondary with maybe even a potency primary here in his offense set. So you're doing, uh, you're doing okay-ish. Uh, crit damage is actually really good value here. You just, you, you'd want some speed, I guess. Although, uh, if we're really wanting to be friendly, which I don't know if we are, she can use all four of those stats. Crit chance, offense, uh, two types of offense and potency, I guess. Maybe I shouldn't have judged you as harshly as I did. A uh, protection, this needs to go. Again, nice sisters, unless you have the Omicron, which kind of sounds like a broken record by this point. Protection is not doing anything for you at all. Switch to health. Although, again, on a gear 7, I get, or whatever this is, gear 8, I don't know how much there is to do with that. So, that is pretty much going to be it for the most part. Daka, ditch the crit, crit avoidance. I don't see where it's going to be viable at all. Asajj needs to really have crit damage if you want her to get her stacking offense to really mean something. Mother Talzin probably has bigger problems than her mods, but offense is key. Zombie, I don't care. And Spirit, probably more potency. So overall, you have officially been mod shamed with the Night Sisters, and hopefully your, your TW uh, officers do not watch this. But until the next time, guys, stay awesome.